from Washington to a one-year contract. The Blues and Robert Thomas, they get an eight-year extension. Tampa Bay signing blue liner Mikhail Sergachev, eight-year extension. Detroit, they signed David Perron to a two-year deal. And Seattle just picked up Andre Burakowski. NBA Summer League, Milwaukee up on Minnesota, 49-46 in the third quarter. WNBA, the Connecticut Sun beat the Indiana Favor 89-81. And we got 150th open. Rory McIlroy, the favorite 10 to 1. Shifley 14 and Jordan Speed rounds out the top three, 15 to 1. I'm Cam Stewart for Picks, Props, and More. Catch game time decisions with your host, Gabe Renzi. It goes down Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid and Sirius Channel 159. And here's Scotty, Barbara Hart, Mafia, and the crew with Hour 3 of Coast to Coast. Has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, Carver High, we go into uh, hour three here and we dive back into a little NBA rack from the Summer League. Yes, we have a lot to do here on the final hour. A lot of pressing matters. Let's go. The Grizzlies tie the Summer League record. 120 points. They beat the Nets 120-84. to Lakers beat the Clippers 83-72. 20 points for Benedict Matherin. You talked about it with Mike earlier uh, as the Pacers beat the Pistons 101-87. to Celtics beat the Warriors 103 to 92. We did have a major injury, Scotty. Pelicans rookie EJ Liddell diagnosed torn ACL, uh, getting hurt in the summer league. Not a good scene there. Yeah, the kid from Ohio State, and he's done now. So uh, he's going to spend a year uh, getting his knee right. And that's what uh, the bummer is of summer league. Like, look, uh, I still don't agree that uh, Bancaro should have been shut down after two games. But then you could say, this is why they do it. I don't think they uh, actually plan it that way. They don't go into the day thinking, let's see who's going to blow out their ACL today. But there has been the sharp uh, labrum tear and then now the Liddell ACL blowout. It's really a drag for him. Obviously, he's going to have to go at it for a year. No good, that's for sure. We have a lot of summer league action today. In fact, we're already underway Milwaukee and Minnesota right now, 53-48. Bucks lead the T-Wolves. We have the Cavs and the Hornets coming up. Uh, they are about to tip at this very moment. Wizards and those Pelicans at 6 o'clock Eastern. Raptors and the Jazz at 7 o'clock Eastern in the first set of games here. I mean, let's go. I, I love it. Every night there's tons of games. I've been watching them, and I, I get into it. I think it's fantastic. I don't even... You know, I'm not betting on these games, to be honest with you, because uh, you don't know whether you're coming or going on these bets. You know you got something wrong with you when you start betting games like this. Uh, it's like betting that Korean baseball league that everybody was so high on around here a couple of years ago. It was the dumbest stuff I've ever seen in my life. I wouldn't bet a uh, nickel on Korean baseball, not even a penny. <laughs> I mean, you do get to see uh, Chet Holmgren back in action tonight. Kings and the Thunder. 8 p.m. Eastern tip-off, Heat and the Sixers at 9, Nuggets and the Clippers at 10. So lots of summer league tonight for you. The best game is that uh, Kings-Thunder game because, believe it or not, the Kings have a lot of really good players in the summer league. I know their franchise stinks. I know their team stinks. But their summer league team is fun to watch. They played in that double overtime game last Saturday night. And tonight they're taking on Chet Holmgren who's blocking three and a half shots a game. Watch him on the weak side defense, swatting shots and altering shots in the paint. And you can see his future is fantastic because he's got it down to a science. Also, when you're watching him play, watch his handle. The guy's got a, a like a rabbit dribble, like Harden, uh, behind his back in front between the legs. And then he fires threes off like Durant and he makes them. He's fun to watch defend the rim, and when he gets uh, out in transition, the big fella can run a lot like Giannis. He takes three or four steps, he's up the court, and then he'll drag uh, to the left or right and just fire away, and he knocks him down. I am blown away watching Toothpick play. 
Chris Middleton of the Bucks underwent surgery on his wrist. He is expected to be ready for the start of the season. We welcome in our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast, Sirius XM Channel 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Great to have everybody with us today. Also Very for the exciting. Bucks, Scotty, my boy, Patty Connington, three years, $30 million extension to stay in Milwaukee, the pride of South Bend. Pat Connington, one of the all-time We love great. Patty, but I got to tell you, if he was pitching now, he would have already made $240 million. Uh, I don't think he was that good. I don't think he would have made that much money pitching. I think he made the right decision to play NBA. You can hit do. 210 in Major League Baseball and still make $30 yeah. million. Stop you could, yourself. You could, also, you could also spend five years in AAA making no money. I don't think he was good enough to be a Major League pitcher. Here's Danilo... Uh, Danilo. Gallinari, Scotty. We said he was excited to go to Boston to play for the Celtics. He sure was. Here he is. Uh, I grew up with with my dad since I was a little kid, being a Celtics fan, being a Larry Bird fan. So Larry, when, when legend Celtics, for Gallinari. Uh, I came on the table. It was almost like a no-brainer. Um, and you know, you walk, you walk. Even in this facility, you look around and you Stop see what's going on around. Sweater in the middle of the banners summer. and, and the, the history and and everything that <laughs> our, the Celtics are about. Um, it was a uh, it was an easy choice. Easy. Yeah, choice. my wife did say she wanted to sleep with him. I mean, what is the deal with the sweater? And he's got a, like a polo underneath that, uh, Danilo. It's the middle of summer, dude. It's July. Get the guy a short sleeve shirt. Hey, uh, my the man NBA... can shoot. He can shoot. <laughs> he can shoot. Uh, the NBA has updated their transition take foul rules, Scotty. I know that they were very interested uh, in making changes to that. They have done so. The Board of Governors have discussed the 30-team in-season tournament. I'd like to know what uh, they get for winning that. Does it matter? I mean, does it get you so, automatic? So what does that mean, Mike? Point? What does it mean? We're going to have two champions now a year in the NBA? You're going to have know. a tournament at halfway point, and there's a champ at a halfway point, and there's a champ at the end. I don't understand that at all. And the, I don't the like take it. rule is a, a free throw and the ball out of bounds. Yes. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. So we're taking a look at Heinz Field changing its name over to Akrasure Stadium. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? You have to understand, it's about making money. Here, get ready. Are we not too far off of Lambeau Field being Toyota Stadium, Yankee Stadium being Ford Stadium, and Fenway Park being sponsored by Snickers? I don't know, but this environment is coming only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Was last year Pete Gibson? Like, is that is this basically going to be who he is, or do you think that there's another year? Well, I mean, I actually think this rookie season was much more Pete Gibson because they were using him as a pass catcher that season. Uh, he had 44 targets in 10 games as a rookie, had 52 targets in 16 games last year, did miss the one game with injury. The Sports Grid Network. 
Sports Professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports. St. Andrews, the press center at the university just next to the old course, 150th British Open. Everybody excited about all here. How about the university itself, a leader in tech, esports, and other events? In fact, in the United States, esports engagement doubled from 20 to 21 and expect a 61% additional increase. 2022. That's $610 million and more to come. This is all phases of eSport. We're thinking about an Olympic acceptance of the event. We're thinking about more and more colleges and universities framing their programs around eSports. We're talking about how it's accepted as a sport for people that'll help work on countries' national security and design recognition, a whole host of things over time. So uh, you got to get the BetMGM app. I mean, I, I play with this thing more than I talk to my family. You bet $10 on the Open Championship, and that starts tomorrow morning, and win $200 if any player records a birdie. That'll take like two minutes. Use the bonus code PGAOC2022. That's PGAOC2022 as your bonus code to get your 200 clams off betting $10 on the Open Championship at St. Andrews, which begins tomorrow. If you don't do it, then you're a fool. All right, Carver High, let's talk about it. And I know you're fired up because you got a lot of tickets. And then at some point here, uh, we're going to get Dubsy and your sheet of integrity. That's right. We certainly are. Let's get into it. The 150th Open Championship gets going very early in the morning on the East Coast, around 2 a.m. is when the first tee-off is. Of course, it is at the old course, St. Andrews. And Tiger Woods, Scotty, dreams about this course all the time. He has won here twice all the time that he was laid up with the leg injury. All he thought about was being able to get back and play at St. Andrews one more time. Here's Tiger getting ready for another tournament. It's also one of the reasons why I wanted to play in this championship. I don't know if, what my career is going to be like. You know, as I told you, I'm not going to play full schedule ever again. Uh, my body just won't, just won't allow me to do that. So um, I don't know how many open championships I have left here at St. Andrews, um, but I wanted this one. Um, you know, it, it started here for me and in 95 and if it ends here in 22 it does if it doesn't it doesn't if i get the chance to play one more it'd be great um but there's no guarantee well there you go it's so doom and gloom but he's going to be there playing tomorrow so that's all that matters and we already know he's won there twice and they were honoring him today and his boy rory yes honorary members of saint andrews uh that is for life rory and tiger woods uh, can go there whenever they now please. Honorary members, it must be nice. Here is Justin Thomas, of course. He has won a major this year, Scotty, the PGA Championship at Southern Hills. He is probably Tiger's best buddy on the entire tour. And he says Tiger has been talking about just jawing his ear off for a year and a half, hoping that he can play here at St. Andrews. Tiger was in earlier, and he was saying that when he was thinking that maybe he could play again, he really had his focus on this week. He was thinking about that. When you would visit him last year, did he talk about this week? Yes, quite, quite often. Yeah, he reminded me many times that he planned on beating me here at this tournament for quite a while. <laughs> Even before he was playing? And more than the Masters or anything like that? For sure. I just think it was the most realistic timetable that he had, but... Um, it just so happened to be that he was ready earlier, but I know that this, if you could have told him at the beginning of the year you had one event to play and one event only, I think, which it sounds like he made apparent in his press conference, and I would also say that it would have been here. I'm telling you, like, uh, everyone laughs at me when I say this, 
but and, and this is bigger than the masters. I'm, I just, I, that's I'm, it. Yeah. I'm done arguing with people about it. People think that Augusta is all that matters is because it's so Americanized. I think, I think the masters is fantastic. It's awesome. I get it. It's incredible. It's amazing. It also is second fiddle to this. I don't care what anybody says. This is what it's all about. And if I'm wrong, then what the hell did that guy just say right there? And what did Tiger Woods yep. say before him? This is what it's, it's all about. The entire game of golf is about this place right here, St. Andrews. The Open Championship uh, is top shelf. Here's another guy who's going to agree with you. Will Zalatoris, Scotty. He has finished in the top 10 in all three majors this year. Been knocking on the door. Sixth at Augusta. Second at Southern Hills. Second at the U.S. Open. Does he break the door down at St. Andrews? He loves this course, too. Everyone has said that the buzz of the town, that there's just nothing like it, and it, it just exceeds all expectations. And even that goes to Saturday when um, the locals were able to walk down fairways with us. It, it's, there, you know, you have Augusta National, which is obviously one of the premier, most private places in, in really the world. And then you come here and I'm walking down fairways with 60 people and their dogs. And, and I think that's what makes golf so fun is it's obviously this week is much more the dogs. They bring the um, dogs out the there people's tournament. Andrews? And obviously Augusta, you're, you're <laughs> specifically going into the history of Augusta. And, and I, I think it's very cool seeing the two opposite sides and I love them both equally. Yeah. And I think everyone loves the masters and I love the uh, British open way more. And so does Jordan Spieth, our final one before we get to Dubsy. He says, if you're not pumped up to play at St. Andrews, then you shouldn't even be here. Here's Spieth. The course is incredibly firm. The greens are flawless. And the setting as you come in these closing holes is um, even more grand than it was seven years ago. So um, very exciting. I think if you're not uh, getting amped up to play in this open i'm not sure you know i'm not sure this is the right right sport for you um it's extremely <laughs> extremely exciting and i'm looking forward to getting out there i guess i'm off at three o'clock ish on the first round so um get to see a bit on how the course is really going to be playing to start which may be a good thing and then go out and brave the wind there you go there you go jordan spieth former open champion as well all right scotty it is time here it is. Dubsy previews the Open Championship at St. Andrews. The final major championship of the year is here, the 150th edition of the Open Championship. And we're going back to the home of golf this week, St. Andrews. The old course, so much prestige, so much history, and so many storylines shaping up for this one. Can Tiger Woods give us one final run at a major championship on a golf course where he's won at twice before? Has Xander Shoffley finally found that killer instinct late on a Sunday afternoon? And what a year your dominant world number one, Scotty Scheffler, is putting together. If you're looking for the prototype this week, look no further than last year's winner, Colin Morikawa, the ultimate chess player. And what about this golf course, St. Andrews? the old course this is the 30th time we've made the stop here though the played as a par 72 just over 7300 yards it's Lynx golf you need a bit of imagination a bit of shot making it's not going to be a longer test but it all comes down to what mother nature turns up and for what i'm seeing we could have a really low winning mark for this one right around tiger's record of 19 under par the key stats we're looking at look at strokes gain on approach the good iron players have the edge but again it's Lynx Golf. It gets really exciting around the greens here. So factor in strokes gain around the greens. I mean, if you find yourself in one of these deep pot bunkers at St. Andrews, you can go from making an easy up and down part to a triple bogey, and that is your tournament done so. And speaking of done so, there's so much more pressure. We've got to put so much more weight on the intangibles this week, especially being at the home of golf. Who's made of the right stuff? Who wants that arm wrestle? It's not for everyone. We've seen some famous collapses here at the Open Championship. I'm looking at Jean Vanderfeld. I'm looking at my Aussie. Adam Scott still brings a tear to my eye, but you need to be made of the right stuff here. It's got an all-star cast shaping up for this one, and maybe this is the last time we see the best of the best from every tour coming together to lift that claret jug on Sunday afternoon. The Open Championship, the home of golf. Go and get those tickets in. If this one doesn't get you jacked up, I'm sorry. I don't know what does. Let's go. 
See that okay. right there? That's, That's awesome. what I'm talking about. All right, give me the odds, Carver High. I will give you the odds when we come back. We are going to run out of time. I can't get through all the odds. Uh, you're going to have to sit it out and wait. When we come back, the odds for the Open Championship and the Sheet of Integrity, the prop oh. bets, the top 10s, the 20s, and the 30s for the Open Championship. Uh, we also have to get through. We haven't even talked about NHL free agency yet today either, Scotty. So odds for the Open, Sheet of Integrity, all the moves in the NHL today. We got to fit it all in next on Coast to Coast. My boy Gino staying in the Steel City. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full them. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Donovan being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we either go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. Oh boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The early line. But Josh Allen ranked third on that top five because this is what caught my eye. In front of Tom Brady, Josh Allen 7-1 to to win MVP. We've talked about it a lot. The Bills not only favored to win the AFC, but favored to win the Super Bowl. It just is becoming clearer by the day that this is the Buffalo Bills season for a lot of people. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Do you agree that Kenny Pickett should be the betting favorite right now to win NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year? I don't, Ben, and I've said this a few times before, but I don't think any of these quarterbacks should be on the top list for Offensive Rookie of the Year because I don't believe any of them are going to have significant yep. starting time unless something major happens. You look at Kenny Pickett at plus 550, the favorite to win Offensive Rookie of the, the Year. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. And then Garrett Cole will be the payup price here at $10,500. Uh, Washington in particular, David, 1-9 and nine in their last 10. Worst team in baseball by far. Uh, but pretty decent matchup tonight at home. Yeah, they stink. But Josiah Gray does not stink. Now, uh, he has definitely had some troubles with run prevention this season. He's given up, you know, six earned runs a couple times, seven earned runs a couple times. But even... The Sports Grid Network. see that uh, Carver High has that a shine going right now. That's the uh, open championship shine. He's excited to have massive quantities of tickets going on the event at St. Andrews on the old course. He's ready to go. We got odds first, then the sheet of integrity. Let's do it. Let's go, baby. Here it is. Uh, the top of the board, the odds to win the Open Championship, Rory McIlroy is your favorite, Scotty. 10-1 to 1 right now. 
Xander Schauffele, who has been red hot, won at the Travelers, won at the Scottish Open. In the last year, what else has he done? Gold medal in, in Tokyo. The Zurich in New Orleans could be a good choice. Jordan Spieth, John Rahm, Scotty Scheffler flying way under the radar after already winning the Masters this year in several other tournaments. Matthew Fitzpatrick fresh off a U.S. Open win, the Irish Bear, and Justin Thomas. Where are we going, Scotty, for outright wins at St. Andrews? Let's do it. I would love to see Rory win, but I cannot play him at 10 to 1. Maybe we can find something good for him on the weekend. The Irish Bear at 20 to 1. Justin Thomas, 21 to 1 for Justin Thomas. The price alone, Scotty, gets me involved. Tommy Fleetwood, 28 to 1. He's been excellent at the Open. Joaquin Neiman, 37 to 1 is somebody to watch. Louis always needs to be watched at 40 to 1. Mr. Burns, Sam Burns, just like Drano said, 42 to 1, I got him at. Ryan Fox, Scotty, DP World Tour player, very good over there in Europe at 55 to 1. Bobby Mack, the Scottish man, I always have him in this at 60 to 1. Danny Willett, look out, 110 to 1. Willett could be around this weekend. And Jordan Smith, 120 to 1. Patrick Reed is my live guy, too, at 95 to 1. I could see Patrick Reed uh, hanging around this weekend and bothering everybody when he's near the top of the leaderboard. It is time. The props, the sheet of integrity, the Open Championship, St. Andrews. Let's do it, baby. I mentioned Tommy Fleetwood. How about the top English player at plus 500 for Tommy, Scotty? Let's go and get that. Tiger Woods, we've heard all about it. We've played the clips. He's been dreaming about playing at St. Andrews. I think, Scotty, he is going to empty the tank this weekend over there at St. Andrews. He might never play another tournament again in his life. I think he's letting it all go here. He won't be able to walk on Monday morning. He's not going to win, but give me Tiger at a top 40 but, uh, at plus 125. Give me him to make the cut as well. Zach Johnson, Scotty. Top 20 at 11 to 1. He has won at St. Andrews. He has a bunch <laughs> of top 20s. Has a bunch of top 20s in the Open Championship. Willie Z, let's go for all four top 10s. Plus 290 for Willie Z to finish in the top 10. Bobby Mack has finished in the top 20 the last three Open Championships. Plus 240. Will there be a playoff on Sunday? 3 to 1. Plus 300. We've had a lot of them at the old oh. course. And then oh. I've got two matchups for you. Jordan Spieth to beat John Rahm at plus 114, and Bobby Mack to beat Victor Hovland at plus 128. The sheet of integrity for the Open I Championship. Mean, that is just absolutely brilliant. I love it. And then uh, I'm riding uh, Terrell Hatton. Uh, yes. And, you know, Tony Finau, Fleetwood, King Louie. And then uh, Outsiders, I'm on Morikawa and your boy, the Irish Bear. Look, I think Morikawa, nobody is talking about him this week. Uh, he's the defending champion. Uh, he hasn't had a great year. He's 28 to 1. I mean, that, it's a worthy price uh, if you wanted to take a shot with the defending worthy. champ, Colin Morikawa, this week. That's for sure. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I wish that I could be up at 2, at, uh, 2 a.m. East to watch them tee off. The kids will not allow that, but it'll be on the TV at 6.30 a.m. after little Willie uh, whacks me on the head and wakes me up. So there you go, the Open Championship. Let's do it, baby. NHL free agency today, Scotty. Noon Eastern, it all got underway. The money is flying out the window, and goaltenders moving around by the dozens, uh, the capital Scotty signed Colorado Stanley Cup winning goaltender Darcy Kemper. Five-year deal, $5.25 million per. The Oilers signed Jack Campbell. Five-year deal, $5 million per. So Toronto doesn't want anything to do with Jack Campbell, but the Oilers open up the door, Scotty, and say, yeah, sure, come on in. We want them to fix the goaltending, but I think Kemper would have been a better option for them. I mean, without a doubt, uh, the thing I said to you earlier was exactly that. Why didn't they sign Kemper? The guy just won the Stanley Cup, and people still don't believe in him. But he got enough cheddar today. It doesn't matter who believes in you when you get $25 million. I'm surprised Campbell got $25 million, to be honest with you. And Louis Domingue ended up with the Rangers. I don't believe in that dude at all. I'm not buying the spicy pork. Bottom line was he got whacked by the Rangers is the real moral of the story. 
I knew they were going to lose that series when they lost their goalies. That was it. You went wow. with a third string minor league career hack. You get the result you get. The Rangers signed a couple of guys to potentially back up Shesterkin, Louis Domingue, the spicy pork, and Yaro Halak. They also signed to a one-year deal. So they're going to have a few guys in camp uh, to potentially be the backup for Igor this year. Claude Giroux, Scotty, uh, goes to the Ottawa Senators. Three years, $6.5 million per. Now, this had to deal with uh, Giroux, local boy, near the Ottawa area, wanted to go home. Sens have made a couple of moves, Scott. He traded for Cam Talbot, traded for Debrinket from the Blackhawks. They add Claude Giroux here. They've been doormats for the last few years, but maybe starting to put together a little bit of a team in Ottawa. And they got uh, Johnny Hockey. So I think they signed Goudreau as well. No, no Goudreau to Ottawa. No Goudreau. No. Did, when did that? Did they? I think they signed him to a three-year deal too, unless I'm mistaken. I could be I, I, I could be wrong, but I think they got him. I, um, I you yeah. know we'll 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 have to double check it. Oh, yeah, so it's just Giroux. Giroux. It's not it's not just Goudreau Giroux. as well. No Goudreau. Well, then still they got the wrong over. player because uh, they got an old yeah. washed-up Claude Giroux for that kind I of agree. money. Uh, they, the guy went to Florida. He didn't score a goal. He was awful. I thought I saw Johnny ended up there as well. No? No. The Johnny situation right now is, of course, he turned his back on Calgary last night. He let them know that he would not be returning there. The latest reports say, Scotty, that the Devils and the Islanders are in the bidding war for Johnny Gaudreau and that the Columbus Blue Jackets have allegedly come in with a heavy $12 million per year offer for Goudreau as well. Uh, so we will now see if money really matters. Because uh, if he goes and signs in Columbus, uh, that means money is all that matters, uh, as far as I'm concerned. You do not want to play there. I mean, that is purgatory for play hockey Columbus. players. I don't care what anybody Never. says. I'm not getting gassed up about the Islanders either. I'm, I think he's going to sign with the Devils, Scotty. Uh, that's my prediction for Johnny Goudreau. South Why Jersey would he guy. sign with the Devils? Uh, that's been the closer to the family. Everybody wants to be closer to the family now, apparently. That's, uh, uh, you know, the whatever. whole the whole shtick uh, there. Leave me alone, family, when I'm playing hockey. Just leave me alone. I'm not getting you tickets. Shut up. Tampa has re-signed a bunch of their guys to eight-year deals. Mikhail Sergachev, Anthony Sorelli, Eric Cernak all get big money. Arizona signs Nick Bugstad. The Ducks signed Frank Vitrano, played very well for the Rangers down the stretch. The Sharks trade Brent Burns to Carolina, Scotty. Uh, he's also washed, just so you know. Just like Claude Shot. Giroux, Brent Burns is, is washed now. Uh, so that really doesn't make that big of a deal. The Blues re-signed Nick Letty after trading for him at the deadline. The Red Wings signed Andrew Kopp to a five-year deal. That's a good he deal. played well for the Rangers. And they signed David Perron, also just uh, in the past hour, who's been with the Blues the past few years. So a couple good signings for the Red Wings. Rangers, Vinny Trocek, seven-year deal, $5.62 million per. little help with the power play and face -off. How is seven that years. possible that that guy got seven that years. kind of money? I mean, are you kidding me? Seven years uh, for Vinny Trocek. The last couple might not look too good down the road. Devils trade Pavel Zaka to Boston for Eric Howla. Leafs also sign Ilya Samsonov. Him and Matt Murray will be the goaltending pair in Toronto this year. Good luck with that. The Penguins, Scotty, after all the chatter, ended up bringing everybody back. Latang came back. They ended up bringing back uh, Ricard Raquel as well. And... Gino Malkin at the 11th hour, four years, 24 million. They had rust back to everybody's back in Pittsburgh. Six million per, uh, you know, remember Latang and, and Malkin, the lengthy uh, injury history and their age. I think they'll probably get burned on both those deals with, you know, these guys miss tons of games and they're old. So I think they did it for the history of the franchise. Malkin will go down with Lemieux and Crosby as the three greatest Penguins of all time. Evander Kane back with the Oilers. You mentioned a bunch of times during the playoffs. They better not lose that guy. Four-year deal for Kane in Edmonton, $5 million per year 
for him to stay there. 13 yes. power. The, he had 13 goals in the playoffs in 15 games. End of story. I agree. Wild trade Cam Talbot to Ottawa, as we mentioned. The Preds re-signed Philip Forsberg to eight-year, $70 million extension. We mentioned the Matt Murray trade, and the Avs promote Joe Sackick to the president of hockey ops, get a little promotion after winning the cup. Uh, it's actually less work, too. Uh, Chris McFarland will be the new GM. I have to say that the day today in hockey was better than that stupid draft of theirs. Uh, the draft was the like blowing also. your nose or blowing a <laughs> fart. And all I know is the free agency today from noon until now has been a whirling dervish. Is that a word? Yes. It just was all day long, the action. Round and round. I mean, there's guys going everywhere. I love it. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart will get you ready for game time everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The Pat McAfee Show. Here we are, Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. Baker Mayfield is going to... <gasps> the Carolina Panthers. Wow. Congrats to the Carolina Panthers, who for another season are taking a shot on who is going to be our franchise quarterback, and we will run the carousel until we find our guy. Maybe it's Baker. Shout out to the Queen City. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Farrah and I oh. played golf in 110 degrees for four hours yesterday. I didn't sweat at all. You melt. You sweat. I was baking, but I was not <laughs> sweating. There was no <laughs> sweat to be had. You cannot sweat when it's 110 degrees in Vegas. Jules is really going to appreciate the graphic. Julian Edlow is soft. <laughs> Hopefully he stays up tonight to watch the replay on sports screen. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> t-shirt. Screenshot this and turn this into a t-shirt. We're the Bostonian versus the book. The early line. Let's factor this in here. You take a look at DK Metcalf. He's a pure wide receiver on a football team that we expect to win like five or six games. So you know what that means, Kevin? Probably going to be down a lot in the second half and particularly in the fourth quarter where you enter into the fourth quarter with 55 yards receiving. You leave that game with a buck 25. Another team doesn't care because they won by two touchdowns. But you got your filler yards at the in the end of the game. And only on Sports Grid. Of course, Scott Miller is our baseball insider from the New York Times and MLB Radio and Sirius XM. He joins us from Southern California on Coast to Coast on this midweek Wednesday. Scott, good to see you. I want to start with uh, what I deem to be the best story in baseball going right now. 
and I put it at uh, two tiers. I got tier one, the Baltimore Orioles, and tier two, what the Seattle Mariners are doing. They did it again today. Suarez with a big home run. Flexen won his fourth straight start. They've won nine in a row. The O's have won nine in a row. I mean, it was just weeks ago that I was hearing the, uh, you know, the Angelos family fighting, the infighting about keeping the team in Baltimore. One brother says we're moving. The other one says it'll never happen. In the midst of all that nonsense, they have moved to 500 and the entire AL East is 500 or better. It's crazy what the Orioles have done. It is. You're right. When you said the, you were going to talk about the most surprising or, or, or the best story, I, w- I was waiting to see what direction you go because I always think, well, my knee-jerk reaction is Shohei Otani. But you're right. Baltimore, great baseball market, great area, um, historical team. Yet, really, since the Washington Nationals moved from Montreal in about 2004 or five, you know, I mean, it's just the Orioles have just been cratering, you know, nonstop. They had a bit of glory when they made the playoffs under Buck Showalter. But, man, Boog Powell and Jim Palmer and Brooks Robinson, and those guys are such distant memories now. And and um, they've been so unwatchable in this rebuild for about the last five years. But now, uh, you know, how about Cedric Mullins? Uh, this kid is so fun to watch. And, you know, the people in Baltimore deserve – to see some good things happen. And nobody would have foreseen this this nine-game winning streak. There's no way. And you mentioned everybody in the AL East is over 500. You know, opposite of the AL Central, where only the Minnesota Twins are over 500, and the other four below. The AL East, as Aaron Boone, Yankees manager, said, you got to bring a lunch to play in that division. I, I love that line. And Seattle, again, Beautiful stadium. That might be the most underrated baseball stadium going. Beautiful city. And yet the Mariners are dragging like an anchor the longest playoff drought, postseason right. drought in professional sports going. I mean, they haven't made the playoffs since 2001. Uh, Julio Rodriguez, their version of Cedric Mullins, uh, you know, he's a, a superstar waiting to happen. He's going to be in the home run derby. It just came out today. Yeah. It's going to be fun, and we'll see what happens with the Mariners. But good for them I, because after they won 90 games last year and, and were in the race until the very last day of the season before dropping out, better things were expected from them this year, and finally we're seeing that. So you're, I'm assuming, going to go up to Chavez Ravine for the festivities on Monday and Tuesday, no? Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm not. I'm going to miss this year's All-Star game. Long story. I won't bore you, but I've got a first ever family reunion in the Midwest that I just uh, I, I have to go to. And so I'm going to miss it. What could be worse? A family <laughs> reunion and you miss the Midsummer Classic. I mean, you got to blame that? somebody for that. Uh, let me ask you, I, I, I couldn't believe how... The Red Sox stole the game Saturday night and then Sunday night, and the Yankees had leads in both games. Then they turned around, had an off day Monday, and then last night, after Cole pitched brilliantly for seven innings, the bullpen for the first time the entire season, they were 49 and 0, they blew a game, and the Reds stole that game last night in the boogie down. I almost fell over when I was watching it. And I've been watching every single game uh, of this, you know, Yankee run they've been on. Watching them every night is like, it's just fantastic. It's like butter. They kick everyone's ass. Now, all of a sudden, they're losing to the Reds? I know. Yeah, I mean, it, and it, it almost doesn't even matter how they lost to the Reds. It's just you see the raw score, not even knowing what happens. Cincinnati f- 4, Yankees 3 in the Bronx, you're like, Wow, that that's baseball, though, right? Sometimes you, you're just blown away. Teams that shouldn't win win, even if it's in the Bronx. But you're right, and I love that you brought this up, by the way, after the Mariners, because the Yankees are on such a roll. You know, they're they're chasing history right now, although their bullpen needs to tighten it back up a little bit. But they're chasing history, and that 
you know, they're, they've been on pace to, to match the 2001 Seattle Mariners record of 200 or of, uh, 116 wins in a 162 game schedule. And a couple of things you mentioned just to touch on. I mean, the, the Red Sox um, have been playing well lately. How about that moment Saturday night when Jeter Downs gets the game winning yeah. RBI? He gets the walk off hit for Boston. I mean, that's. Just great stuff. A kid named for Derek Jeter years ago, you know, ends up in Boston system. And then his very first walk-off hit of his career um, it comes against the Yankees. That that was a, a just a classic moment, part of what makes this game so fun. Yankees bullpen you mentioned. Um, you know, Clay Holmes, a breakout star of the season. With that sinker ball, it's untouchable. <laughs> Do you – I uh, think that, I mean, in terms of watching uh, this Captain Saga, the seven-part series, are you going to get into that, or, or can you handle seven hours of Derek Jeter? <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what. I, I'll probably catch up with it eventually. Um, it's hard to handle seven hours of anybody. I, I would say if I made it through, I didn't make it through the entire Michael Jordan. What was that called, that that? You know, uh, that, a year the last two. dance. Yes, I, I watched parts of the last dance. I didn't make. I could make it all the way through that. Um, I'll probably give it a shot with Jeter. And who knows? I just went to the theater the other night. Made it through two hour and forty minute film on Elvis, which I highly recommend. By the way, good. Did you stuff like it? Was it theater. good? Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah, the yeah, kid that, that plays kid, Elvis, is unbelievable. He's great. He's yeah. great. So, uh, and Tom Hanks is in that as well. Uh, let me Very ask good. you about uh, uh, the Trout situation. Last night he left that game with a tweak back. Uh, that is not a good bit of news for Angel fans. If that guy's back goes and he goes out of that, they don't even win with him. They've gone 11 and 31 since they were 27 and 17. And I think Otani's unbelievable. We bet on him every time he pitches to have, you know, over seven and a half strikeouts. He has 10, 12, 13. Guy hits home runs on the same night he, he pitches. He is phenomenal. And Trout is a badass, but they still don't win. It's amazing. I mean, it's we're going to look back on this 30 or 40 years from now, this era, uh, Scott, if you and I are blessed to still be rocking and rolling 30 or 40 <laughs> years from now. We're going to look back on this era as, as, as just one of the most inexplicable wastes of talent um, that there's been in our lifetime. I mean, how can you, with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, consistently miss the playoffs? And we're not talking about the 1950s where the only teams that played in postseason were the champion of the American and National League. We're not talking about, like, the period from 1969 to 1994 where you had two teams in each league in the playoffs. I mean, these are expanded playoffs, and this year there's going to be six out of 15 American League teams in the playoffs. And even with Trout and Otani, still no. I, I agree. The thing that makes me nervous with Trout, anytime you hear that, as you said, back injury, it's not good. Last year, he only played in the 36 games because he had that strained calf. And that was an oddball thing, too, because – you hear a strained calf. I'm not minimizing it, but right. you don't expect 130 games to be missed. You know, you might expect a month, month and right. a half, but Trout, the big number with him right now, used to be his, his home runs, his stolen bases, you know, what his on OPS is. The big number that I'm watching with Trout is 30 and 31. He turned 30 last summer. He turns 31 this August 7th. That right. alone, those numbers tell me, combined with the injuries, I hope I'm wrong, but that suggests we may well have seen the, the best already of Mike Trout. He may, you know, the body's starting to break down, it looks like, and I hope I'm wrong, but that's just horrible news for the Angels. And it also is horrible news because – if they don't, the way they're going right now, you have to think Shohei Otani is going to leave via, as a, when he becomes a free agent after next season. 
Yeah, we got plenty of room for him here in, in the Bronx. I mean, we got we can get him a nice yeah. uh, penthouse pad in, in Midtown Manhattan, maybe uh, Upper West Side, no problem. Hey, let me ask you about the Mets. I think a lot of people thought that they were going to go down to Atlanta, and it was a one-and-a-half game lead uh, when it started, but Scherzer was brilliant, and I bet on him to win that game against Max Fried. Then they lose. Then they turn around today with the Basset Hound and won the series in Atlanta, and they leave town still two and a half up, not one and a half. They still have the lead in the East. I don't think anyone saw it coming that they would go down there and take two or three, to be honest with you. That, that was a statement series. There's no doubt about it. And I, I'll tell you this, the Mets had that 10-game lead in the division on Memorial Day. Right. And I know a lot of people are focused on how hot Atlanta has been and how you know, they chop that lead down to a game or two. But I still look at it more from the Mets' perspective than Atlanta's. The Mets, they weren't going to run away with this division. When they built that 10-game lead, I mean, that it wasn't going to be a cruise the rest of the way. What that 10-game lead did, Scott, was it gave them a lot of wiggle room for things like having to play for a while without Max Scherzer, and without right. Jacob DeGrom. Right. Uh, things like if Alonzo or Lindor went into a slump, which they were going to, um, it gave them a lot of margin for error. And here we are more than a month after Memorial Day, and yeah, sure enough, that 10-game lead has melted down to, to two. But to your point, what happens now? Scherzer's back. The Mets take two or three from Atlanta. This is going to be a fun, fun ride the rest of the way in the National League East the rest of this summer. So they have uh, DeGrom pitching tomorrow night in AAA. He'll come back right after the break. What is bigger, Jacob DeGrom coming back to the Mets or Tatis coming back to the Padre lineup and defensively in, in Petco? You know, both are, are going to be big, big, important moments. But I, I'm going to say, Scherzer are coming back to the Mets because I think the the Padres' best path to the to the to the postseason is wild card. I just don't see them overtaking the Dodgers. Whereas, you know, so I'm not diminishing Tatis Jr.'s return. I mean, they need all hands on deck, and but I think Tatis Jr. he'll be more important. Assuming, and the Padres have not played well the last three weeks. They've been sloppy defensively, and their right. offense has been sleeping. But I think Tatis will be more important in October because that'll give them a puncher's chance in a you know best of seven right. series. Whereas I think Scherzer, you win with pitching in this game, and Scherzer can be the difference between the Mets winning that division or you know wild card. Yeah, I think Degrom and Scherzer are going to be filthy in October. Scott, great stuff. Thank you, my man. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game four live wins. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What stood out to you most about game number one of this ginormous July series between Atlanta and New York? How good both of these teams are. I, I mean, but you highlighted. If the Mets are doing what the Mets were built to do, which was 
you know, have Scherzer and have DeGrom and have those guys shoving and kick it right to the bullpen and one of the best closers in the game. I mean, you're looking at Edwin Diaz striking out more than half of the batters he's facing right now. It is outrageous. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. How about an Oriole win at Wrigley against the Cubs and the game to go over five and a half. So we moved that total down a couple of runs. Orioles to win parlayed with it plus 145 tonight. I'm on that. Yeah, I think that'll happen. Last night, we went under with the Mets and the Braves. Tonight, we're going to look for both teams to score three or more runs. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Haro with your daily numbers game at the press room at St. Andrews University, just next to the old course for the 150th Open. Everybody really excited here across the pond. A lot of stuff happening. Gaming has been accepted for many years here, Ladbrokes and otherwise. We'll get into that later in the week relative to the Open. But a Washington Post University of Maryland study just revealed that 66% of Americans think gambling is acceptable and they will or do. 50 some percent, 55 percent said yes in 2017 when the Supreme Court legalized and about 41 percent 15 years ago. The trend is up, mainstream gambling more acceptable. People understand that dollars should be used anyway for infrastructure or other causes. Not as many incidents in game or integrity issues as people could expect. Overall, it's accepted here for years in the U.S. It's becoming more and more accepted. Fast forward for all on your facial. The Pharrella finish. They love it. The fans. Nate Diaz wants his release from the UFC. He says they're holding him hostage. Kamara Usman is confident the light heavyweight title will be in his future. Nevada family secretly living in a children's museum. They found him with an arsenal of weapons. The guy had like all kinds of guns and ammunition living over at the museum. Isn't that like your boy, the actor? What, what was the guy that lived in the museum? <laughs> the actor. You know who I'm thinking of? I can't think of his name. The guy that was running around, he was a little dude <laughs> in the museum. You can think of it. I don't remember his name. He does all the funny movies. Uh, Staten Island crash leaves three teenagers dead, six others injured. Did you see that wreck in Staten Island, Carver High? The car was cut in half. Uh, it was like a Mustang cut right in half. All those kids in that car did not go well. I feel horrible for him. Florida man caught attempting to outrun police on his lawnmower. <laughs> You're <laughs> cruising down the street <laughs> in his right lawnmower. What a twin outboard. Your boy, he had it all going. And a doobie, too. Former NFL running back Marion Barber. Died of heat stroke. Not good, Carver High. Stay by the pool. Police warn parents after finding rainbow-colored fentanyl. All the kids are going to love the pretty colors until they touch the bag of fentanyl and they're dead. U.S. tourist survives falling to Mount Vesuvius after reaching for his phone. Your boy tumbled into Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> <laughs> Then they'd probably try to blame the wife that she shoved him. The hoe. Starbucks to close 16 U.S. stores due to crime and rampant drug use outside of the Starbucks. I'll take a Frappuccino. I'll just be out front smoking crack. Let me know when it's ready. GTD is next. For Carver High, I'm Pharrell. Good night, everybody.